Okay. So for internal and external rotation of the hip, we want to be familiarizing ourselves with the 1990. I'm just going to have this for my ankle. You might have your yoga mat the other way, or maybe even anything underneath that ankle, just because you might be pressing on that ankle a little bit. And you might, if you have yoga blocks or something similar, these are going to be very useful. So um, we're just going to start off by coming into our 1990. So as close to 1990 degree here and a 1990 degree there, using a yoga block to help support you, to keep you over your thigh. And we're just going to sit and breathe here. Ideally for two minutes. Two minutes um, is a really uh, interesting amount of time that it takes to start communicating to the tissues so that they let, let start to let go. So we're going to create the, the nicest stretch on the outside of the hip here. If, we, if we've got it in us, we can just lean forward a little bit, but we're taking the weight from with the, using the yoga blocks to take some of the weight away. So I'm leaning over my knee, over my shin. I'm feeling a lovely stretch on the outside of my hip and my glute. And my focus is in this hip socket because it's this hip socket, my left at the moment, because my left leg is forward. It's this hip socket that we want to be communicating with. So I'm using the breath to direct my attention into that hip socket. And we want that hip socket, in a moment we're going to be start doing some movements to, tr to send a message to that hip socket to move in a rotational pattern. But at the moment we're just keeping a nice long spine. Packing those ribs down, so I'm not letting those ribs flare when I breathe. I'm actually keeping them down, which keeps the abs tight. And I'm breathing into that tight area, creating a lovely bit of intra-abdominal pressure, like a cooking pot. Nice long spine, getting over the, getting over the joint. If this isn't available to you, you know, you can be up here. This is perfectly acceptable. We don't want to be leaning forward if, if, um, if we don't have it in us yet. And we want to avoid any pinching sensations. It should be uncomfortable, but not pinching. So when our two minutes are up, we're going to start applying some pressure. So... For that, I want to be pushing this entire area, this entire shin from everything from the foot to the knee. I'm going to be pushing that down into the ground as if I'm going to rotate my leg through the ground. And that sends the message into this joint to start rotating. We're not going to move, obviously, because the floor's there. You see, I'm slightly flip, pulling my toes up. That's going to help accentuate that stretch into the hip. We're, we're going to push down for 10 seconds. About 20 to 30% effort. And relax. Now, Without changing any of the positions, keeping your spine nice and long, we're going to attempt to pull the foot up 
in the opposite direction. So now we're going to create external rotation in the hip. It's probably not going to move, but we're at least sending the message. So keeping that chest over the leg, intending to pull up. Four, three, two, one, and relax. Just finding that best stretch again. Maybe getting over it a little bit more. You might have been given a little bit more range of motion, maybe not, doesn't matter. Just notice what you notice. Take a nice deep breath. Then we're gonna push down. Ramping up the pressure, maybe starting at 10%, 20%, 30%. Forty, fifty percent, and relax. Take, take a nice breath, and this is we're going to pull it up. And let's notice I'm not changing my position. I'm trying to stay over it. Take a couple of breaths. And we're gonna go for our pails again. Pails is pushing, the pushing one. Progressive angular isometric loading. Right. Pushing down. All this stuff is trying to push through the floor. Everything's burning on the outside of this hip. We're going for 30%. 40%, 50%, 60, 70%, and relax. Nice deep breath. And pulling up. Notice the back leg is pushing down. It's the back leg is helping in this attempt to pull everything up towards the chest. And I'm pulling myself towards my leg, pulling my torso towards my leg. The leg's not gonna come up, but that's the message we're sending. And relax. Okay, so now just come get over the foot a little bit more. You might notice that, you've, that you, your nervous system has given you a little bit more access. We're just going to own that now. By staying over it for 30 seconds or maybe five long deep breaths. You might notice yourself just creating a little tension in there. Whatever creates the best stretch, you can push down a little bit in your ankle. Breathing into that hip socket. Just owning everything that we've just worked for. Now, pushing down. We're going to use as little help assistance as possible. Maybe both hands, maybe one hand, maybe two fingers, maybe one finger, maybe nothing. But we're going to push our leg to push our torso upright. And we're going to do five reps.
and that is just going to drive that in all that new extra range of motion we've just gained we've just driven it and we've incorporated it into what we had before and so that's why we do these little reps at the end okay now we're gonna we're gonna do the other side but in between this side and the other side we're just gonna do a little transition so Deep breath, lifting this lit leg, keeping this knee down. For as long as possible. Driving those knees apart. And then eventually it's just gonna come off the ground and that's perfectly fine and we're going to come into bear sit and just getting nice and tall and getting over it as much as possible now it's nice to have two yoga blocks here so that you can really kind of get over those hip sockets and just breathe in it. If you want, you can maybe even try to grab your ankles and get over it a little bit more. Driving those knees apart. All right, and when you've had enough of that, we're going to continue with our transition, slowly dropping the right knee down, keeping that other knee as far away as possible, but allowing it to move. And we're going to come into 90-90 on the other side. slowly and with control lowering that back knee all right so i'm going to spin around so that you can see me and we're going to do the other leg so again Getting over it, staying away from any pinching pain. Finding the best stretch. Maybe raising those toes, creating a little bit extra stretch along the outside of that leg into the hip and we're going to sit here for the two minutes or so breathing calming the nervous system feeling uncomfortable but not painful we need to learn to work with our discomfort because that breathing in the space of discomfort maintaining a nice rhythmic breath will begin to down regulate the alarm system of the body and that's one of our goals Being everything a little bit active, you, you might start to naturally feel like you want to push into the ground. We call this the passive part of the stretch, but there's really no such thing as a passive stretch. 
not in this work. So we can always be creating some kind of like resistance there to, and that will just help accentuate the stretch. But also capture a little bit more end range strength and mobility. Okay, now when you're ready, nice deep breath, keeping a long spine, not letting those ribs flare, pushing to the ground, 10%, 20%, 30%, remember, our attention is in the hip socket. It's the hip socket we're rotating by pushing all this stuff into the ground. And relax. That's our pails. And this one's called the rails. Regressive angular isometric loading. So take a deep breath. Ribs, not, abs nice and packed in. Lifting that front up, lifting the chest towards the shin. Packing that air into the abs. And relax. Couple of breaths. Getting over it. This one, big inhale, packing that air into the abs. And push. Thirty percent. Forty percent. Fifty percent. And relax. Ooh, let it all go. Deep inhale, packing it in. And rails pulling up, pull that ankle towards the chest. Everything's involved. This hip's involved. That leg's involved. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Okay, last set. Deep breath, packing it all in. And push. 50%, 60, ramping it up. 
five long deep breaths, 30 seconds. On the exhale, you can exhale through the mouth and imagine you're frosting up a glass like you cause it like it's like we call this like a foggy breath. That's one of the most calming things you can do for your nervous system. Okay, now, remembering we can use both hands, we can use one hand, we can use four fingers, three fingers, two fingers, one finger. Whatever level you're at is fine, or we can use no hands at all. And we're gonna do reps in and out of our new, newly hardly hard hard one end range and if we have it in we can even put our arms out like this and just to create more load all right Again now, we're going to transition into our bear position, lifting that back knee up, everything's alive, my foot is alive, my knee, I'm pulling that ankle, pulling that heel into the ground, and when you reach your end, slowly allow that knee to come up, and then transitioning over to the other side. Dropping that knee down to the floor, trying to create as much space as possible between the knees. Once it's down, maintaining a nice long spine. back into 1990. Now, as if that wasn't enough, turn around. Now in 1990, we are going to work the back leg. So, Taking some breaths, getting over it as much as you can. Using yoga blocks to keep, maintain a nice long spine. We want to be bringing our attention into this hip socket now. Getting over it to the point where it's uncomfortable, but there's no pinching pain again.
maybe you feel like a little downward pressure there it might accentuate the stretch we're going to do our two minutes and when the two minutes are up we're going to be pushing that leg down into the ground and bringing it this way so we're externally rotating that hip and then we're going to try and lift it up so we're going to try and get over it and lift it Feeling a little cramping happening up in my hip. With cramps, just be mindful with them. They're actually really indicative of something, that something's changing in the nervous system. Things that want to be tight are loosening, but there's a hesitancy for the nervous system to let go. I find the more I breathe into them, the more space I can create and the more I can teach the alarm system of the body that I've got this. So when our two minutes are up, we're gonna to start to create that downward pressing rails, sorry, pails. without losing the position of the body. And then like up to 30% ramping it up. And then let that go. Oh yeah. Put some cramping in there. Okay. And then rails. So I'm just gonna rotate a little bit. But I'm gonna try and lean into this. Lifting the foot off the floor. It might not lift off the floor, that's okay. Getting over it, long spine. Finding your best stretch. Packing it in. And push. Fifty percent. See, I'm using my arms to help me get over it. But you can just equally just prop yourself up. You might find you need to move slightly that way to get anything. But we want to be communicating to the hip socket to internally rotate. So we'll leave this one at two 
for now, for today, because we've done a lot of work. So just getting over it for now and just doing our five long breaths. Attention in that joint. Really owning any new gains we've just received or worked for. And then coming into this position, leaning forward, and we're just going to do five reps. Lifting our heel as high as possible, our back leg. Nice. Again, bear sit, transition. We'll go a little faster on this one, seeing as we've spent some time in this already. A couple of breaths at the top. Driving those knees apart. Stay in this position and show you this one from this side. So, first of all, just getting over it, finding the best line of tension, the best stretch from foot to hip. Keeping a nice long spine, packing the air into that abdomen, maybe pushing a couple of times with some gentle pails. Getting over it as much as you can without feeling any pinching. Again, this is the passive part, but you know, as I start to gain strength in these positions. I find myself inclined to create a little resistance, a little tension, even during the passive stretch. It certainly helps me find a better line of tension, a better line of awareness even through the body, through that hip, into the knee, down to the ankle and into the foot. We're going to call that two minutes. Deep breath, packing into the abs and pushing down. 
20%, holding at 30, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, alright, and lifting that hip up. Lifting that ankle. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah. Now I encourage you to do whatever feels nice for you. If that means rotating the way a bit, that's fine. Um, Whatever feels like the nicest stretch and the nice in that you've got control over the movement. Deep breath. Pails. I'm really trying to push everything down into the ground here. Really trying to rotate that hip socket. Externally rotating it. Everything's alive through the knee into the hip. I'm trying to stay over it. 50%, 60%. And relax. And coming into our rails. Five, four, three, one, zero. Getting over it. Foggy side. Oh. <sighs> All right, coming into me. Leaning forward over the front leg, and then we're just going to do five reps. All right. Now... Just smoothing out that transition. That was a lot of tension to be building up in the hips. So afterwards, I want to shake those out. So coming in down to our feet. Shifting, so just feeling our feet, maybe wiggling those hips a little bit. And doing some nice hip circles. Five or ten in one direction, then five or ten in another direction. Keep 
breathing. And then shifting the weight onto the left foot, we'll take the right foot and we're going to just send it side to side like we're like it's a, a hammer or something that we're knocking side to side it's a weird movement but we're trying to get all the stuff in the hip to jiggle and if that's impossible i want you to keep trying to do that but you can also just get the meat and just jiggle it we want to be rotating all that meat on the bone. And then shake it out to the side. Really shaking out all the joints. If you need to hold on to something, you can. Okay. Shifting the weight on to the right foot. Again. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Trying to get that meat to move in the thigh. And then out to the side, really shaking all those joints. Shake it all out. Take all that tension out that we just built up. Shake the shoulders, the spine, the neck. Uh. 